So now on to our dinosaur of the day, Dryosaurus. And the name Dryosaurus means tree lizard, and that's because of the habitat it lived in, the forest, and not the fact that it had oak leaf-like shaped cheek teeth, which is what some people have said. It lived in the Jurassic. Samuel Wendell Williston in Wyoming found ornithopod fossils in 1876, and Charles Marsh named them a new species of Laosaurus, a hypsilophodont, in 1878. It was originally called Laosaurus altus. Altus means tall. But then in 1894, Marsh made it its own genus, Dryosaurus, which is an iguanodont. The type species, therefore, is Dryosaurus altus. The holotype is a partial skeleton with a mostly complete skull and lower jaws, and other specimens have been found, like the rear half of skeletons and partial skeletons. Other species have been named as part of the Dryosaurus genus. One was on an accident. In 1903, Giuseppe Stagano accidentally renamed Crocodilius phosphaticus to Dryosaurus phosphaticus, but he meant to call it Dirosaurus phosphaticus. And then Eric Bofutat changed it to the correct Dirosaurus phosphaticus in 1981. Also, Valdosaurus canaliculatus and Dysolotaurus Leto Vorbeckai, which we talked about in episode 20, used to be considered Dryosaurus. Fossils have been found in the U.S. Dryosaurus fossils have also been found in Tanzania, sort of. In 1995, paleontologist Peter Galton wrote the paper The Ornithopod Dinosaur Dryosaurus and a Laurasia Gondwana Land Connection in the Upper Jurassic. And this paper compared Desalitosaurus, Letau Vorbeckai, from Tanzania, East Africa, to Dryosaurus from the Morrison Formation in North America and found similarities, which he considered more evidence of a land connection between Laurasia and Gondwana in the Upper Jurassic period. Dryosaurus had a long neck, long legs, and a long stiff tail. It was about 8 to 14 feet, or 2.4 to 4.3 meters long, and weighed 170 to 200 pounds, or 77 to 91 kilograms. A dig site was found near Irvine, Colorado, and it has hundreds of Dryosaurus altus fossils with specimens from all ages. All known specimens of Dryosaurus were still growing, so it's unclear how big a fully grown adult could get. But it was an herbivore with a beak and cheek teeth and possibly cheek-like structures to hold food in its mouth. It ate low-growing vegetation. It had short arms with five digits on each hand and three toes. It was a fast runner and it used its tail to counterbalance, so running away was probably its main defense. They may have traveled in herds and they may have taken care of their young. Eggs have been found in hypsilophodonted nests. And again, Dryosaurus was really considered a hypsilophodont. At Dinosaur National Monument in Utah, scientists found a Dryosaurus hatchling, which shows that, like other vertebrates, baby Dryosaurus had large eyes and a small snout, and as it grew up, its eyes became proportionately smaller and its snout proportionally longer. So, in other words, very cute and cartoon-like. Dinosaurs that lived along Dryosaurus was Camptosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Othnilosaurus. Predators included Torvosaurus, Marshosaurus, and Allosaurus. You can see a juvenile skull of Dryosaurus at the Carnegie Museum. The juvenile skulls tend to be harder to find because they're more fragile. Though we have talked about in general how bodies, juvenile bodies, tend to be easier to find because they're smaller. Yeah, so you can fossilize the area easier than an 80 foot long patch. But I guess with skulls, since they're all pretty fossilizable size, <laughs> <laughs> it's it must come down to the fragility that impacts it more. Yeah. There's also a mounted adult Dryosaurus at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, and it's the only mounted Dryosaurus altus. In August 2014, Dryosaurus was 3D printed. Paleontologist Jeffrey Parker and Kirk Brown from Go Engineer, a Stratasys retailer of 3D printers, printed a model of Dryosaurus that Parker had found in Wyoming. And they scanned pieces of the Dryosaurus skull and bones and then printed it, 20 files printed in five batches. Dryosaurus was the largest dinosaur 3D printed at Go Engineer. It was 50 inches by 15 inches. And according to Parker on the Stratasys blog, quote, 3D printing allows a paleontologist to quickly reproduce a fossil bone that can be used for academic study and for building museum exhibits that can be enjoyed by everyone. Having a 3D printer is like having your own little robot factory, end quote. Go Engineer printed two Dryosaurus skeletons, one for Parker to study and one to display for their customers. And next, Parker plans to print more 3D dinosaurs and create a tableau. He plans to print two Allosaurs and a Ceratosaur. So that'll be really cool to see when that happens. So Dryosaurus is part of Dryosauridae, which is not to be confused with Dirosauridae, which is a family of extinct crocodiliforms. 
Dryosaurids were primitive iguanodonts, and they lived in the Jurassic and Cretaceous in Africa, Europe, and North America. Iguanodonts were herbivores that lived in the Jurassic and Cretaceous, and they included Camptosaurus, Iguanodon, and Tenotosaurus. 